Hey guys, this is Josh with Down to the Roots. It's been a while since I made a video on my worm beds, so I figured I'd do a real quick update for you. And I'm going to go ahead and harvest this horizontal migration bed and show you the overall setup of it and how I started it whenever I first built it and everything. But this is my setup. You can see I've got my buckets of aged horse manure here. I've just ran that through a half inch compost screen. And these two up front, I'm going to use to fill this bed back up once we harvest it which i'm going to show you here in a little bit and the other two is what i use for my live bedding whenever i feed my worms that i explained in my other worm feeding video but this box is it's just an old chicken brooder box that i built i've got a better one now so i just use that to store some of my equipment and stuff for the worm bed in but basically the only changes that i've made in the worm bins is i was given a cross cut paper shredder so I've started shredding up all of our old junk mail and I've been using it for my dry bedding along with the cardboard that I already tear up. But get this out here. This is my vertical migration bed, the stackable bed. You can see I've already got two trays on it and this one is close to full. So I'm going to have to build the third soon and go ahead and switch to it. But I will make a video whenever I build it and show you how it was made and just the overall setup of this video. You can see I've got a compost thermometer in it. I don't know if it'll focus. This is the compost thermometer that I use for my compost outside. And this is a unfinished, unheated garage. I don't heat this all the time, only when I'm down here. So I try and keep an eye on the temperatures of the worm bed. I've got that down in like the two inch area, three inch area where they do most of their composting work. And I try and keep it around 40 or above. You don't want it to freeze. If your worm bed freezes, it will kill off all of your worms. It's not a total loss because it won't kill the cocoons and you will have more, more baby worms whenever it warms up, but it will slow you down a lot. So I try and keep my bed from freezing. There is a couple of ways that you can keep it warm during the winter. The obvious is heat the garage, but I don't want to spend electricity. I want to do this as energy efficient as possible. And another way, which also uses electricity, is a heating pad. You can just take a heating pad, like just a regular either seed starting heating pad or the one that you use for like a bad back, sore muscles, stuff like that, and just lay it on top of this dry bedding and plug it in. And the worms will migrate up to the area that's the temperature that they like, which works good, but I don't want to use electricity. I want to do this as energy efficient as possible. So the way I do it is once it starts creeping down to the 40 degree mark, whenever I feed them, I will feed them like double the amount that I normally feed them food wise. And what that does is it gives plenty of food for the bacteria to gnaw into and start to break down and it'll heat up. It's bad to do that during the summertime because it'll heat up too much and kill your worms. But during the winter, it's a good thing for it to heat up. Then the worms will just migrate up to the area that they like and they have food. You have to keep more of an eye on them food-wise because they do compost slower because it's cool out and there's more food in there than normal. So you can overfeed them easily. But I always just dig through the bed and whenever they've almost processed all the food, I'll feed them again. We'll dig through these really quick and just show you a look at the worms before we start going over the harvesting of the other bed. Dig down here. Yeah, you can see a few on top there. See if I can zoom in here. See a couple on top. All kinds of them underneath. Composting away. It looks like I'm going to have to feed them before too long. So there's not much food left in here. But what I want to go over today is this bed. This is my horizontal migration bed. Like I said in the previous video, I only feed half of this bed at a time. And the other half will age and process, finish processing. And all of your worms will migrate over to where the food is. It's been two or three months since I fed this side. So all of the worms have migrated over to here. You want to give it plenty of time to age before you harvest it a month two months three months because you want it to dry out a little bit so it's easier to harvest and you want to give the worms plenty of time to migrate over 
you want to give the cocoons time to hatch and all those little worms to migrate over to where the food is. But there might be a couple of worms in this side. The majority of them is over here. 99% 90 of them is over here. So it won't hurt to harvest a couple of worms out of this side. And what I do after I switch sides, I will keep just an old piece of newspaper or something on it, big piece of cardboard on it, something like that, just so it's easily accessed and it will keep it dark in there for the worms that's still under there migrating over. This is unprinted newsprint. I got a roll of it here. I got, a, I think, two or three rolls, but I get that from our local newspaper company. They, their machine won't handle the roll when it's that small. It comes in a six foot circle, I think, six foot roll. And once it gets that small, their machine won't use it. So they have stacks of this that they'll give away. They send to the recyclers and all that stuff. So that's a really good resource to get. I'll use it in my worm beds, in my garden beds. Uh, use it to start fires, just all kinds of stuff. So what I do is just keep this covered with a piece of that. And then you can get into the castings whenever you want to. Because I will harvest out of this from time to time. Just to like make potting soil or something like that. But right now you can see pretty good looking casting there is pieces of stuff pieces of cardboard bigger chunks of the bedding that hasn't broken down but this is perfectly fine to just throw in your garden what i would do is whenever i'm planting my garden i'll dig the hole for like a tomato or paper or whatever i'm planting an inch or so deeper than i want it to be and i'll just take a couple handfuls of this and throw it out in the hole before i plant them and then take the rest and top dress around the plant is one good way to use it Whenever I'm making a seed starting mix, I will screen it through a little screen that I've got. It's just a little basket, but I'll show you here in a little bit how I do that. But I'll just screen it through it to a finer consistency, and then I will use it to make my seed starting mix. So I'm going to uh, set you up on a tripod here in a second, and I'll show you how I harvest this and just the overall setup. This is about, I'd say, eight inches deep. It started about four inches deep. Yeah, it's like as deep as my hand before you get to the bottom. And in the bottom, I have gravel and a piece of weed cloth. That way, if it does end up with too much moisture in it, which I try and keep an eye on my feeding so I don't get too much moisture in it, it does have a place to go. But I will show you that and just tell you the overall setup of this once we get you on a tripod. A lot of times, I'll just harvest straight out of the bed to do my vermicompost mix, but you can do this same process in a tote or buckets or whatever you store your castings in. What I use is a little basket that I bought at the dollar store. It was like a dollar, two dollars, but it's got a quarter inch screen on it, a quarter inch hose roughly in it. Works really good for screening this out. You can buy quarter inch hardware cloth and make a compost screen out of it, which I probably will do eventually. It's just the same process of how I made my half inch compost screen. Just build a wood frame, put the hardware cloth on the bottom of it. But this works great. I've used it for years now. And what I do is I'll take me a container of some kind, lay it on the bed here, and put my screen in it, put my basket in it, and get me two or three big handfuls of the vermicompost and put it in the basket. And then you just bounce it around, shake it side to side. And this will screen out all the big pieces that you don't want in your seed starter mix. What you're left with is pieces of cardboard and the paper that hasn't broken down. And just the bigger chunks of bedding that haven't broke down. And what I do with it is I'll just put it, in a separate, put it in a separate container. And you can put that in your planting hole whenever you're planting plants out in your garden. Like I was talking about, you can just throw it in your mulch layer of your garden beds. Or you can use it as live bedding in your worm beds like you use just the regular horse manure. What you're left with is just really good worm castings. Very fine, perfect for starting seeds in. You can plant seeds straight in this, but what I always do is take cocoa peat or coconut coir and mix it half and half with this and then throw in a couple handfuls of perlite and it makes a really good seed starting mix. But that's how I harvest to make my seed starting mix. And what we're going to do with the rest of it is I'm just going to scoop all this out. We'll use my coffee can here. 
and we're going to scoop all this out and put it into buckets and probably tote because I don't think I have enough buckets to do all this. But this will end up being maybe four or five gallon buckets full, five, five gallon buckets full. So I'm just going to go ahead and start scooping this out. Now I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to turn the camera off and then I'll get back with you after I get all this out because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me scoop all this out. But once we get down to the gra gravel bed, I will show you the overall setup of the bed and how I put the maneuver back in. Okay, so I've got all of the castings out of the bed and into these buckets. I ended up not having enough empty buckets to put all of it in, so I used this tote. This is actually the original tote that I started worm composting with. It had its pros and cons, but it was a good cheap way to get started, to, just to see if I was going to like it. I started with it, and I think I bought two pounds of worms offline, and used it for a long time, and then I started building my own beds. But I plan on doing a series, like a beginner bed series, like how to set up a Rubbermaid tote, and just a cheap way to get into worm composting for those people that's interested. I ended up with two five-gallon buckets worth in this tote. A full bucket here and another half bucket so I ended up with three and a half buckets and then I ended up screening out some with my little basket just to show you what it looked like it's really good stuff really good to start seeds with and just use around the garden any way you want to and then this is the leftovers that come out of it you can see produce stickers and pieces of cardboard left and little plastic windows from the junk mail that I end up shredding up and using so now what we've got to do is get ready and put the manure back in the bed and get it ready to switch over whenever I decide to do that I've been talking about my compost screen so I figured I'd go ahead and grab it and just show it to you real quick before we start talking about the bedding and everything but it's basically a 2 by 4 frame that I built it's the perfect size to go on a wheelbarrow and I took half inch hardware cloth and just stapled it to the back side then I took scrap pieces of plywood and cut it into strips and put it over the hardware cloth and screwed it down if you don't put the plywood on there and you just staple that to it whenever you put your manure or your compost in it the weight of it will pop that off so you have to put the plywood strips on the bottom of it to keep the hardware cloth on there but what I do to sift out my aged manure is I'll just take my wheelbarrow out there with this compost screen shovel me two or three shovelfuls of the manure on there well composted manure and shake it around and screen all the manure out kind of like I done the casting just a minute ago with that basket then I just take a shovel and shovel it out of the wheelbarrow and put it into these buckets The overall setup of this bed, whenever I first built it, this is all recycled wood. It's all wood that I've had left over from other projects that I've done. I think I might have bought one 2 by 4 to finish it, but that ain't bad. What I did was I decided the size that I wanted, which was 2 foot by 4 foot, and I built a floor for it, basically, like a bottom framework. Let me see if I can get under here and look. You can see the framing that I've done on it. But I built it and topped it with a piece of plywood. Then I put these boards on the outside and put these boards on the inside. Put the two by four, put the plywood on the inside of the two by fours. That way the inside of it is one seamless piece of plywood. Then I took a piece of scrap plastic that I had from another project and lined the entire inside of the bed with it so it ends up being just a big plastic tote is what this is it's like a big giant plastic tote just like the little rubber made tote that i started with it's just bigger and you have more area that way you can do the migration method and you don't have to pick through that and sift through that and get all your worms out before you can harvest it what i did in the bottom of it was I went and bought just the cheapest gravel I could find, cheapest landscape and gravel I could find, and I ran it through my half inch compost screen. That way it was of the right texture, it was coarse enough to act as drainage. They so wouldn't a little tiny pieces in. 
and I put two inches of it in the bottom of the whole bed. There is a few worm castings in there, a few worms will get down in there because they're not the smartest things, but for the most part, everything stays out of it. But you can see the plastic down there in the bottom, and there's no water puddled up. If there was water puddled up down there, you would know that you was watering too much or you weren't feeding properly and you need to adjust your feeding habits. You either need to put more dry bedding in there or quit watering them as much if you do end up watering them. But I put two inches of that in the bottom and then I took this old cheap weed cloth. It come from like a dollar store or Walmart or somewhere and put two layers of it down and then you put your manure on it. The weed cloth stops the castings and worms and stuff from going down into your drainage system and clogging it up. So after I put down the gravel and I put down the layer of weed cloth, I took aged horse manure and I filled the entire bed with roughly three to four inches of the aged horse manure and I started feeding one half. After three to four months, I started feeding the other half. And what you do to switch sides is, like I said in my other video, I feed half of the bed at a time, but I only feed half of that half. That way they can run from the stuff that they don't like, or if it heats up too much for them, they can stay over in this side until it cools off. But I alternate, I'll feed this half, then this half, and just alternate back and forth. So to switch sides, you want to feed this side last, and then switch over to this half of this side if that makes sense that way the worms are closest to the new food so they can go over and find it what i do to harvest it as you can see i took these boards and just shoved them up against that cardboard to keep it from falling down in there whenever i was harvesting it and i've done it roughly halfway you can see that screws roughly halfway then i just scooped all this out like i showed you a minute ago and put it in the buckets so now all we have to do is put the manure back in this half and cover it up with a piece of newspaper print and then whenever I'm ready to switch sides I'll start feeding that side and then in another I don't know two three months I'll be able to harvest all these castings just like I did this side so that's the overall process of how I set up this bed and just how I run it and how I build it and everything so I hope you enjoyed the video just subscribe to us hit the like button if you have any questions comments or suggestions just leave a leave them in the comment box below thanks for watching